Hi there everybody, Adam here from Mirror World News. Today we're going to be deciphering perspective and point of view for your writing. Don't go away. Hi there everybody, welcome to Mirror World News. My name's Adam and I'm here with Justine Ali Dowsett from Mirror World Publishing. And today we're going to talk about point of view. It's a very important aspect for any manuscript that you are going to write. So, first of all, point of view, also known as POV. What does that mean? The perspective <laughs> that you tell your story from. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're, no, I'm just kidding. So, we're, <laughs> you know, there's many <laughs> options available for point of view. So, what are the different options that people can use for different points of view? Okay, so you've got first person point of view. Uh, third person limited point of view, third person omniscient point of view, and then second person point of view. Okay, so there's a lot of them. So we're going to go over each one of them, don't worry. So first of all, first person, we'll start with that. What is first person's view? Okay, so your first person point of view is when your story is told from the perspective of your protagonist, your main protagonist only. So usually using the word I. Right, so I walked into the room and saw XYZ or whatever. Exactly. Okay, and so what is second point of view? So second point of view is rarely used, uh, but can be used in some circumstances. So in like a choose your own adventure novel, maybe, or something where the author is talking to the reader, and they use the word you. All right, so you walk into the room and see three goblins standing there looking at you. You could find the sword. Of, that, second <laughs> right. perspective, okay. It's not very common. It's not, not in uh, fiction or literature. Okay. And then there are two types of third-person perspective. So the first one you said was limited. What is that? Okay, well, third-person perspective in general just means that you're telling uh, that there is a narrator. So the author is usually the narrator. Sometimes the narrator is in the story itself. It doesn't really matter where the narrator is. Uh, but the two different types are limited and omniscient. Limited is one character's point of view or perspective is shown at a time. Uh, I like to think of, of the narrator or of the point of view as like a camera. So where's your camera? Uh, with limited, you're kind of riding over the shoulder of one character and showing everything that they see, think, experience, etc. And omniscient is more like what I call God mode. So you're kind of above everything looking down and you get to experience the thoughts, feelings, uh, actions of everyone all at once. Okay, so an example of limited would be, let's say we'll use uh, Timmy or whatever. Yeah. So Timmy's the main so he, character. He walked into the room, he discovered this, the goblins, he fought the goblins with the sword. Uh, whereas omniscient is Timmy and Harry uh, walked into the room and the goblins were afraid that they were going to be defeated, but Timmy wasn't. He was ready to jump in with his sword. And, so, so you're describing sort of thing. Every, describing everybody. everybody. Okay. And so since there's so many different options that we have for perspective, how would I choose which one that I would put in, say, for example, a story that I'm writing? How do you choose which one to use? So every story is different, and every story has different requirements. And I, there are so many people who write a story or, or a novel and then realize maybe that perspective didn't work and have to rewrite their whole book, so that's terrible. So try, mm. try to really think about this before you sit down and write, because it can change your entire book. Uh, but how to choose is to decide what kind of story it is, uh, and whose story is it really? So that's a good question to ask yourself. Um, you can also genre takes a play into it, or okay. um, young adult um, or versus adult. Uh, t you tend to get a lot more first person in, in teenage stories because they have a much more personal view of the world. Okay, and it's but usually about that one character. About that so. one character, yeah. So if it's a story of personal development or growth of a character, so they go from being you know a teenager and they experience different things and they grow into adulthood, that would be a personal story. So I would say use the first person perspective. So you show that person's growth and you show through their own mind how they experience and see the world. Okay. But you have to remember that first person is very limiting because you only see and know what that character experiences. You don't get to see any of the other characters right. when they're alone. You don't know what happens off screen, basically. So, like, if Timmy is going into this goblin dungeon or whatever and Henry is slightly behind, yeah, we don't know what, know happens. what happens to Henry, right? Exactly. So you have to think about that. So if it's something with multiple characters and that their other viewpoints are important, you're trying to show maybe different perspectives, you want to choose third. Uh, but you and then third limited is um, you're going to follow that one character mostly with the camera, but occasionally you might switch to another character in like a different chapter or something like that. So you can you can use limited that way, or omniscient, which is really hard to pull off. By the way, <laughs> uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, omniscient you can use if you have um, multiple characters, maybe on like an epic quest, and they're all you know in a group, and, and you.
you want to kind of show all of them just out all the time. Basically. Okay. So why is omniscient so hard? Uh, so a new author or a writer, someone who's not familiar with omniscient, might fall into the trap called head hopping, which is where your reader gets confused because they don't know whose head <laughs> they're in at the time. So omniscient, you have to be very careful of um, really being clear who's acting and who's thinking and who's you know so. There are different ways to show that you shift from one head to another. Um, it's just something you've got to work at to be able to be really clear to your readers. Okay, and there's some some good examples of how to do that. There's um, like if you do a chapter as one character and then a chapter as another character, right. that's an example. Or there's a couple of books that do that as well. You, mm -hmm. They're good things to look into. I've also found more modern books tend to lean towards limited perspective or towards per first person, whereas older books you might find more of the omniscient. It's just that it was the style back then, like the 1800s and stuff. More of that omniscient style. So here's a burning question from some people. Can you change point of view in a story? No. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> off the bat, I would say no. I mean, yes, I'm sure you could, and you can choose to do that as your style, but it comes off as so awkward and jarring to the reader that I would really just avoid that altogether. That's why third person is so... Um, so much of a better choice if you really do want to show those other characters because if you're sh if you're in first person then all of a sudden you have to shift the reader's like what am i reading a different book <laughs> like, right. so it's just yeah it can be rough um and with first person if, if you want to shift to a new character you yeah. can you in can. first person you can shift sure. to being inside the head of a totally different person just be very very clear. clear that that's what you're doing and usually that'll be in a new chapter or a new part of the book and it'll be labeled you know so and so story or so and so like you know this is the character that i'm now telling their part of um but don't just switch be very clear that you're going to switch yes absolutely and so with point of view be very careful uh not to switch or to kind of yeah just don't jar drift. your reader keep that in mind <laughs> one other thing to think about with point of view is how close your camera is this is something that um we didn't really mention in the types of point of view but you can be really really close in to your, your character as and you can be riding around in their head and see everything they think, everything they experience. You can be right there with them, kind of, I, I think, like behind their eyes sort of thing. Or you could be really, really, really far away and only show what they do. Yeah. So that's another thing to consider is how close does your story get? How close does your narration get during your story? How much, are, how much inner thoughts, inner yes. emotion as compared to just seeing what they do puppet style? Yeah. Like seeing so what they're and doing. be consistent. So if you pick one of these styles, pick the one that works best for your book and then stick with it. Which is good advice in, for anything, really, with your book. Once you've yeah. made up your mind and you're going with it, try your best to stick with it. If you find out that it doesn't work, <laughs> then it doesn't work. <laughs> That's my cat wanting to come cuddle, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be pushing, so we should probably end here. So, uh, perspective, extremely important point of view. Uh, just try to stick with it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Don't worry, cat. We're coming. <laughs> All right. So, thank you very much. You have yourself a wonderful time. Again, I'm Adam, and this is Justine. Thank you very much. <laughs>